So, happy New Year's Eve to you. Uh, today I'm actually going to talk about my upcoming project and what it's called is One Lens, One Camera. And what that actually means is for about the next year or so, and read it, I get it, today just happens to coincide with New Year's Eve. This is not a New Year's resolution, nor do I consider this a challenge. This is more or less a project or experiment for me, and it's really to help me with my photography. But I'm going to take a certain amount of time. I'm going to only use one lens, one camera for everything. So all of my stills, all of my videography, I won't be using the camera that I'm currently filming on. I actually decided that I'm going to stick with my G85. And up until now, I spent time just researching which lens I wanted to use. Uh, and it was funny because at first I thought about just sticking with the lenses that I already have, but then I decided on another lens just because it seems like that lens made more sense uh, for all of the stuff that I actually do. And as well as some of the other stuff I'm planning on exploring this upcoming year. So we'll talk about that lens and kind of why I decided on, you know, the focal length, the aperture, and some other characteristics about the lens. And then I'll also talk about some of the lens that I actually had in the running, but I still decided to go with this lens. So what we'll do first off is we're going to talk about some of the rules and and really the rules are very simple. Uh, I told you in the title that hey it's going to be one lens, one camera for one year and that's barring there's any uh, you know malfunction. So if I get out there maybe I get the lens a little bit too wet because I'm outside or I break something I'm going to replace it but my plan would be to replace it with the exact same equipment. If it fails on me same thing it's under warranty i'll send it back to the manufacturer of uh, the lens anyways and you know we'll get another one if this is the camera i'll probably just pick up a used one too easy but i'm going to try to stick with the same equipment for as long as possible the only thing that we'll be using that's extra will be things like you know nd filters or circular polarizers which i have a few coming in for the new lens because it's a different diameter so i didn't have any of that stuff uh, and then of course like my lighting I'm going to use when I do my videos, uh, tripods, that stuff, the accessories, that's going to pretty much stay the same. I don't see adding a whole heck of a lot to it. One of the things that I did add, however, and we'll get to it when I start talking about the, the body and the lens, uh, was something that I felt that I needed in order to do this. So that pretty much covers what this project is about. And really one of the reasons why I'm doing it, um, when I went and did research and I saw that there were other people that have actually taken this on, I believe uh, Leica had actually had a challenge at one time to use one of their cameras for this purpose. But there were a couple of folks that were using it for uh, to combat photography block. You know, they'd run out of ideas. They had all this equipment and all this stuff and they didn't really know really what to take to shoot or just having that inspiration to go out and shoot. So this kind of gets around that. You only have a camera bag with one thing in it, so you go out there and you just shoot. Um, not really doing it for that, and I'm glad I haven't gotten to that point. Hopefully I never do. But generally, it seems like that was the, the, the main reason why people were attempting to do this. Uh, but I did read one blogger that actually did it more for like Zen reasons. Uh, in his mind, he's like, sometimes it became a little overwhelming when you've got like 25 lenses. And you know, you do wanna go out and shoot all these things, but even when you're shooting, you have like second, uh, thoughts or second you second guess yourself it's like wow i wish i had a bought this camera with me or i wish i had a brought this uh, particular lens with me for this shot and in his mind he was like you know what i'll make it really simple i'm getting rid of all of my stuff he actually went out and bought a point and shoot it was a rikon so uh a rikon rikon i don't even know i know it was a nice camera it's a nice point and shoot and but that's what he uses and he still uses it to this day he's gone well past the uh the year point and he's just some pretty amazing photography. He also put up different like tips, ways of, of shooting that kind of helped him with his situation. Uh, like I said, different circumstances for me, I'm doing it because it just seems interesting to me and it does, seems, it does seem like it'll help me rely more on my ability versus on being able to buy the latest and greatest or carrying all of this stuff. Because that's one of the things that I don't like or I don't like having a lot of things when I'm out shooting. Uh, more recently, when I when I went on my last vac vacation overseas, I took two cameras with me, uh, a few lenses, and the same thing. You know, I would find myself in spots where I'm shooting something, and I'm like, "Oh wow, I wish I'd have brought the other camera," or "I wish I'd have brought this." It would do so much better. And I'm like, "I don't want to do that. I just want to go out and shoot photos." 
So that really is the project in a nutshell. And uh, really, now that we've talked about that, we're gonna move on to the equipment. Pretty straightforward. We've already talked about the body that I'm gonna use. And it is my G85. The one thing you will notice that's different about the G85 than when you saw it previously is I've removed the cage, which you know, depending on what I'm gonna be doing, that may be at it. But I also decided to pick up a extended grip. The extended grip actually carries a second battery in it. And I felt that for this challenge, because I'm only gonna be using one camera, I'm not gonna have two. Uh, I would like to actually have more battery uh, life versus, you know, I'm out in the middle of wherever and I'm shooting and then I only run on one battery, then it runs out. Uh, this camera really does go through batteries fairly quickly. So I figured, yeah, having two, and then I still carry a third in my uh, my cargo pocket or wherever in my camera bag if I have that. Uh, really neat feature about this particular device is you can actually set your camera up to either discharge the battery that's in the grip first or that's actually in the camera body. If you wanna know how to do that, just ask because I can put it in the comments. And then you can also, while the camera is running, pop the battery out, pop the other battery back in. But if you're, let's say, recording a video and you do that, it's gonna stop the recording. Now, if for some reason it's already switched over on its own, there aren't any issues. So if you run out of this, maybe, and the way that I have it set up, it starts with the grip anyway, it discharges from the grip. And then eventually this runs out, it switches over to the battery that's actually in the body. Well, if I'm recording, I can just go ahead and just pop this one out while it's actually running off of this battery. I don't know if I do that particular, um, uh, part or if I do it like that if that's actually gonna pause the recording or not That's something I'll have to find out, but it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's a beefy grip um, I will put up a review, but I will also tell you is this is not the Panasonic grip the Panasonic grip Was like $300 Supposedly it came with a battery, but it was kind of hilarious because when I read the reviews the reviews Some of the people were saying that they got a battery some folks were saying that they didn't uh, I bought the newer version which is a knockoff and it did not come with the battery, but I have like a lot of these batteries and they're actually pretty cheap. Um, I got it for way less than what Panasonic was asked. And I say Panasonic, I think it was 347 on Amazon. Uh, this grip, I paid like 40 bucks for it or something like that. Good advance, but I've actually used it already. I went out last night and did some nighttime photography. And yeah, I actually never even got to my uh, my second battery. I think I had like only one bar remaining on this battery, and I did a combination of, like I said, low light photography, as well as um, let me see. I'm sorry, I'm gonna focus real quick. Low light photography as well as uh, some video. So working well so far. So now that we've talked about the body I'm gonna be using for this uh, project, the next thing I'm gonna get into is the lens. So the lenses, I actually went like all over the place. I at first thought, well, I'm just gonna stick with the kit lens. Eh, the reason why I stick with the kit lens is Micro Four Thirds has a smaller sensor and I actually prefer to have a, a much faster lens. So I actually want a larger aperture to let in as much light as possible. So therefore, what I started doing is I looked at lenses that would get me down to below uh, really the prime that I have which I have a 1.7 millimeter or excuse me 1.7 aperture 25 millimeter uh, Panasonic lens it does pretty good in low light. I thought about just using that I wasn't a huge fan of the 25 millimeter without the um, uh, What do you call it wide angle adapter which I've done a review on you can check that out. I'll put a link up uh, I didn't want to have to carry that thing around all the time plus I also don't like at least for steels I don't mind doing it for video as much but for steels I don't like putting glass in front of my glass uh, I feel that it can degrade the picture somewhat uh, so yeah it's just not a thing and plus it's one extra thing I have to carry a little heavier if you ask me so that leads me to my lens selection so I looked at uh, three when I start narrowing down my list. Actually, no, take that back, I looked at four. So we'll start out with, uh, I, I kind of technically looked at more because there were some cheaper lenses like your uh, your Speedmaster, 
that you know had a 0.95 uh, aperture. I read some of the reviews on that lens, and actually I looked at some of the video on YouTube, and I just really wasn't feeling it. I don't really need 0.95 either anyway. And then also I realized you had to stop down to get to like get it to make it sharp, which like kind of defeated the purpose. I understand what you're asking a lot out of that lens, but it definitely wasn't for me. So then that led me to some others. Uh, the popular choice was the 18 to 35 millimeter EF mount Sigma lens. Everybody loves this lens on YouTube and I'm not gonna hate on it, but it definitely was not for me. Number one, and this is another reason why I didn't get the Speedmaster or even consider the Speedmaster is I need something that's weather sealed. Uh, where I live, there's no telling what the conditions are gonna be, at, be like. Where I travel, the exact same thing. And I bring my camera everywhere. I don't want to have to worry about my equipment getting wet, dusty, uh, humidity, you know, you name it. I just want to be able to shoot and not have stuff break on me. And especially now, it's even more important because I'm just going to have one lens. <laughs> so, yeah. The Speedmaster, of course, was eliminated. And then the Sigma was eliminated. But the Sigma was also eliminated for other reasons, mainly the size. Uh, when I started comparing the weight, because the Sigma is not a native uh, Micro Four Thirds mount. You would actually have to get either a, a Speed Booster or a Speed Booster knockoff, and that adds more weight. So the lens was already gigantic. And when I started doing the math, I think I got up to, um, oh gosh, what was it? 30 something ounces. It was like two pounds for this beast. And then I compared that to some of the other lenses, and they were like less than a pound. Uh, for the ones that really kind of made the top two and it was just a no-brainer not to mention the fact that a lot of times I noticed that people were complaining about when you put the speed booster on the front of your camera it was fairly snug however when you place that gigantic lens on the front of the speed booster there was some play and that concerned me uh, not to mention the fact that number one is not weather sealed but now that it can move around it's like there's stuff that can get in there. I could possibly jar it or hit it against something. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want that problem. So that was eliminated. Who knows, maybe down the road I might revisit that someday, but I don't really see it. So that left me with two lenses, okay? And the great thing about the two that it left me with was I could get some hands-on with both of them. One of them was the one that I actually decided on. I ended up ordering it and it was actually this lens, we'll talk about it in a minute, but the other one that was in the, the running was actually twice as much as this lens, and that was the Olympus um, 17 millimeter Pro uh, 1.2. And thankfully, one of our local camera shops, Mike cameras, Mike's camera, had it in stock. So I went down there a few days ago, and uh, even though I had been researching this, I had actually gotten to the point where now I can start checking lenses and looking at them and seeing what I want. But I went down there and, you know, kicked it up. Then it was quality, you know, beautiful lens, wonderful. Played around with it in the store. And to be honest with you, when I left the store, I, that was the lens I planned on getting. I personally just felt I would just suck up the price. And speaking of the price, uh, it was, I think they were asking $999 for it. And that's before tax. Tax here is like 8%. Uh, you can get it cheaper slightly in other places if you buy it used. Really, I think the cheapest used uh, one I found was at KEH, and I think it's still up there now. And that was like $809. So there was that lens, weather sealed. Uh, I honestly didn't really see a downside. It also had a manual clutch on it uh, for focusing. I was, or excuse me, manual focus clutch is what I should call it. It had this weird bokeh feather, feather effect that... Olympus advertises. I played around with that in the store. Didn't really see that big of a difference, but it was a great lens. And I'm not down in it, and I would happily own that lens in a heartbeat. The other lens is this lens, and this is a lens that I have actually been looking at for quite some time. Um, it is the Sigma 1.4 16mm. It's a contemporary lens, so it's not their art series. It's the DC and uh, it actually is weather sealed as well, like the Olympus was. Uh, it's kind of big. I mean, if you think about it, this darn lens, and I'm gonna put it on the body because that was one of the, the things I kept hearing about it, was it 
really isn't the best lens for a smaller micro four thirds system. And I don't really consider the G85 to be smaller. I think the G85 and then of course the G9, the GH5, to me they're the bigger bodies, but they're still smaller than a lot of the other non micro four thirds uh, systems. But with the grip, I think it kind of gives it a little bit more, it makes it a little more proportional. And it's not that big. Now, it's funny though, because when they put the, the hood on here, the hood, man, it seems like it's gigantic. But yeah, like I said, I shot with it last night. My arm didn't go to muscle failure. Like I felt very comfortable shooting with this camera. And uh, so this is gonna be my, my, uh, my system for the next year or so. So going back to the lens, I had already started looking at this lens a long time ago. And I knew that even if I did do this challenge, this was probably a lens that I would pick up, um, as, as well as that Olympus. Like I said, I really like the Olympus. This one was, um, let me see, the MSRP is about 400 and I believe $49. You can get it on Amazon for right around that, you know, generally plus or minus, I would say actually minus. I've seen it down to about 419. And then it was funny because around Christmas time, I saw it drop temporarily down to like 300 and something bucks. I really wish I'd picked it up then. But I watched a lot of videos of people shooting with this. There's a lot more for APS-C size sensors because this is the APS-C size like body. The lens is, the way that I understand it is identical to what you would get if you bought a Sony version of this lens. Uh, they just adapted it for micro four thirds. And I think it works perfect. I mean, I shot with it all night last night. And like I said, there's no play, build quality, metal, um, weather sealed. Uh, the, the, uh, the one thing that I will say that I, I'm getting used to is this is focused by wire, which my other lenses are too. But this one is really like, it's different because when you turn it, depending on how fast you're turning it, it causes it to advance way quicker. It's not linear. Uh, at all so I'm, I'm slowly getting used to that but for the most part uh, yeah i have been pretty happy with this lens and I'm curious to see you know if it stands up you know to the test came with a fairly long warranty I believe that Sigma's warranty I've got the paperwork over on my uh, my drafting table uh, I think it's like three or five years or something so yeah pretty happy with that and uh, I haven't heard one bad thing about Sigma lenses. As a matter of fact, when I went to uh, the camera store to look at the Ollie, the guy that was actually talking to me about the Ollie, he actually uses Micro Four Thirds also. He told me, even though he didn't never had Sigma lenses, but he preferred Olympus, and he liked uh, Leica as well. But uh, the one thing he was saying about this lens is he just felt that it, even though it is a native mount, because the body is more for APS-C, that would concern him. I don't really know what those concerns would be, per se, because the optics and everything, it appears to be fine to me, but we shall find out. Like I said, it's a uh, fairly robust, uh, it's a beast, if you ask me. And I actually think that with the, the grip now, like this camera is like kind of transformed into something else altogether. But uh, yeah, I know I'm going to love it. So that's the lens, and I'm gonna put this back on here and refocus. And this is the body that I'm gonna be using for the next year or so. And I'm literally gonna be using it for everything. So if I'm doing events, whether it's uh, military or, I mean, you name it, I'm gonna be shooting with this same setup for everything. Uh, and I'm curious to see how that works. And when I go on vacation, same thing. When I travel out of town, this right here, I'm taking it with me. I don't care and I hope that this works well if anything I think it forces me to be more creative too and really that's kind of the whole intent of this this exercise like I, I really I'm always looking to better become be better uh, at my craft and if this is one way of doing that then it's totally worth it for me and who knows it may be something that I truly enjoy and I find that I want to do this from this point forward which would be awesome because, you know, as you can tell when we were sitting there talking about it, uh, <laughs> this uh, 
this hobby is not the most like least expensive thing that you could do but what i will say is you can see from a lot of the reviews that i put up the gear doesn't have to be as expensive as one might think if you're the person that likes to go out and buy you know the top end whatever the most expensive thing is you can do that and yeah you could spend a ridiculous sum of money but in order to enjoy this you don't have to so that pretty much sums it up um, if you got any questions about this particular exercise, this uh, project that I'm doing, feel free to ask. Any questions about the gear that I'm going to use, same thing. Just ask. Um, I will be posting a review on the, the newer equipment. So, you know, my my, uh, my battery grip here. I will also post a review on the lens the more I get to use it, which I'm going to be using it a lot. Uh, I'll probably end up doing a one-year wrap-up also once I'm finished with this setup. But uh, I think that that actually does it. So that's it. Agent Fit signing out. Uh, feel free, like, leave comments in the comment section. I'll get right back to you. Other than that, Happy New Year's to you and have a great day.